Hey, how's it going? Ethan here with a, a video about cleaning an Elise's ADAT, uh, the heads to clear an Error 7, with some information on clearing an Error 9 tape jam uh, situation. So I picked up a couple of Elise's uh, Blackface ADAT machines, which are uh, old school SVHS, VCR kind of based uh, multi-track digital recording units, uh, with the goal of modifying them for passing laser show information in and out. So there's some published modifications for the machines that allow passing of analog laser show control signals into the machines and out of the machines. So in my case, the, the main goal is just to pass them through to a computer and not really use a machine to record or play back. But since I had the machines, I figured it would be kind of neat to have them work as originally intended and maybe even play around with them a bit. Um, there is still some content in the laser show world that was recorded on recorded on these tapes uh, a while ago so there is a benefit to having the, the machines working so um, with that I guess we'll get started so here is none other than Elise's ADAP machine with the lid removed um, before I go any further I want to say that this uh, information is to be used at your own risk and I recommend it only for those uh, familiar with or, or comfortable in servicing you know electronics or is some high voltage present in the units you know, the power supply and it is possible to cause further damage uh, another thing is there's quite a bit of a debate so I did a bunch of research trying to figure out what the best method of cleaning uh, the machines are and there's kind of a debate so I'll discuss that a little bit later um, I'm probably using what is kind of considered a rougher method but uh, the, the supplies are a little bit more available so first off on the ADAT machine um, there's a way to check the uh, head hours by pressing the set, locate, and stop buttons. So this unit is 3,610 hours, which is probably pretty high. Um, and the supplies that I'm using is isopropyl alcohol, 91%. Um, the higher the percentage, the better. Unfortunately, you can't normally pick up uh, the, the really 99% pure stuff at you know your standard drugstore or grocery store. Uh, I am using Q-tips, uh, vibrant things, um, to clean the uh, some of the components. However, uh, big rule is you never touch the actual drum head with these because uh, the the fibers will get caught on the the spinning heads, and that is bad. And I'm actually using none other than a clean sheet of uh, white paper, which will soak in alcohol and show the technique for cleaning it. And this is from one that I did already that was successful. Uh, upon cleaning it, you will see that uh, the deposits from the head will end up on the, the paper. Uh, so that's kind of good. Now, a lot of uh, people recommend chamois cloth or whatever. Uh, there are, there's a company that makes, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, um, Chemtech, I think maybe, makes like specific sticks for cleaning VCRs if you can still get them. Uh, I think these kind of supplies used to be sold more regularly, but now that VCRs are a thing of the past for the moment, um, they're kind of not as easy to get. You can find them on eBay, you can find them on, through some suppliers through the internet, but uh, I'm going the paper method. And I've read that it is possible if you get real chamois, not the, the artificial stuff, it is possible to cut that up and use that, which seems kind of kind of cool. You can find it in auto detailing, it's used for drying vehicles, I believe. So. Um, Further on, I'm going to actually, I have a single tape, which is good. This is an SVHS tape, uh, recorded ADAT material. It's kind of my test tape. Now, it's been chewed up once on uh, this machine, actually, when it wasn't functioning. Sorry, on another machine when it wasn't functioning, right? That was the Air 9. But I've kind of fast-forwarded to a place where it's good. And when I go ahead and spin this thing up, you'll see that the, uh, you better air on me. So you can see the Air 7s occurring from, uh, the read data read errors so hopefully with any luck this clean will uh, clear that situation and then while it's drawing I'll show you the uh, error 9 clear or the fix I use for that so I'm gonna throw the camera on a tripod here to kind of stabilize it we got kind of a set up here so we'll fix here zoom in bumped it a bit so um, and I'll do my best to send it away. 
So first thing I'm going to do, bowl, clean bowl. So I'm going to add some isopropyl alcohol to a bowl. Got it right here. All is good. We will dip one of the Q-tips in here. Um, there are companies that sell Q-tips that are probably better for this application. But in this case, I'm just kind of doing a quick uh, clean. Most of the tape path parts on these decks that I, that I have, I think they were priorly cleaned by the uh, former owner who had uh, moved on to an Elise's HG24. And I'm super happy with that unit. I'm hoping to maybe pick one of those things up uh, in the future and just fix it to this. Uh, so I'm actually cleaning most of these. Now, from what I read side to side is the preferred method on the, I, I guess these are probably race heads in this case. This is kind of weird to me because it's not a standard VCR. I assume it's missing you know, your, your stereo audio heads and stuff. So I did a quick wipe down of most of the uh, tape, path, tape path components. Um, in this case, I should have cleaned this uh, Capstan roller just because. Q-tip is uh, not showing really any large signs of debris. These machines are pretty finicky, I believe. So I know the prior owner had uh, done quite a bit of upkeep on them to keep them running uh, error-free. And I, he said that he mailed them off to the leases quite often or to a service center to have them rebuilt. Once again, this probably isn't the best type of uh, swab to use due to the fact that uh, it will fray. I can already see a piece of frayed uh, stuff. So that part's done there. Um, now for the tough part. Unfortunately, this is a little. So I'm going to cut off a, a human sized piece of paper here. And that is what's uh, easy to hold in the case. And what I'm going to do is dip it and get half of it uh, wet. Now, I've already touched it all over the place. It's probably best to. To not touch the uh, paper we're using it, but in this case, 3,000 hours. I assume that a lot of people will be using these machines to actually uh, dump data they recorded to them off for safekeeping. So the trick here is to rotate the head. I'm actually going to power it down. But um, the trick is to rotate the head. I actually should have powered it down before I started, but whatever. To rotate the head this way so as to bring it against the paper. However, um, I don't want to catch the heads on any edge of this paper. So what I want to do is kind of brush it up against it, this motion, so it doesn't catch any edge. I'm going to put my finger on it enough so I can barely feel the heads on the paper, but I don't want to dig down into it because uh, the heads are very fragile and they do stick out. They're, they're basically, you'll see little notches right between the, uh, the rotating top part of the drum and the uh, static bottom part. So, spinning it around. On my left finger, I'm only touching the, the top edge of the, uh, the drum. Actually, on this, okay, on this one here, it's easy just to touch the circuit board only. And she's pretty dirty. So, spinning. So, hopefully you can see this. So you can see the uh, the angle here that I've got this uh, going at. Unfortunately, I think my arm might be. So my paper's drying. Um, I don't know if you can see this with the light, but there's quite a bit of crud on there. So I'm going to set this piece of paper aside, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take a new piece of paper, soak it in some alcohol, get rid of the excess. So our sheet's half, uh, half wet, not dripping anything in there, and my garbage bag fell over. So we're slowly getting more crud. There's actually a lot of crud on this one. Uh, this is, seems to be quite a bit dirtier than uh, the last deck I did. I picked up three of them. One worked, two did not. 
one was a tape eater, which I'll show you how to fix that, and these two were uh, error prone. So, still tons of crud on this sucker. Um, my knowledge stops with the, uh, the original black unit, the LX and the XT, I'm not, I've never, you know, messed with them much. Once again, there are reports on the internet that this isn't the best technique and it uh, chamois better. Um, Lint-free cloths were also mentioned, but I can't really determine what exactly a lint-free cloth is. So, and doing it again, third piece of paper. And now I'm not really getting much dirt off of it anymore. So as I spin it, there's there's no, well, still got some crud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, a, a, the raw side and just run it for a second to try to. So I think that should be good. I don't see it writing anymore, sorry, leaving any more deposits on the paper. This is the third piece of paper and it's still leaving deposits, so it was pretty dirty. What I'm going to do is step away from this for a second. I will show you the fix for the Air 9 that I found um, on YouTube. This one was actually another uh, another poster had posted, I guess, an ad for some sort of uh, cleaner. So we'll step up over here. This here is the... Um, another machine that I had uh, already worked on. So this is the underside of the deck. So you can see the, the high voltage power supply. Um, the back side, there's the IO boards, which are the, the boards actually I'm gonna have to modify for the, the laser show stuff. And then there's this um, position detection switcher right here. So in the case of the, this error nine that I was getting where it was, you know, it would eject leaving a bunch of tape in the deck and, and cause a, a big mess. The fix was to actually use, I used some deoxit, which uh, is, uh, I guess, maybe a lubricant and uh, contact cleaner used often for, you know, faders on mixers or other linear and, and rotary potentiometers. So by spraying that into the, the top of this so that it would kind of drip downwards, uh, it seems to have cleaned it, and now I don't get that air anymore. And there, there's another video on YouTube kind of specifically to this although they're using some other contact cleaner, or I think it might be an ad for that contact cleaner, but I was able to pull it off with deoxit. Your mileage may vary, and I don't know that this is the only solution. Uh, someone else had mentioned that the capstan belt had come off. I only see two belts, one here and this large one, and I would think that um, if the belts do come off, there's a good chance at the age of the machines that the belts have stretched. So, I don't know. This one seems to still work. Haven't had an issue yet, so... That was the Air 9 cleaning. It's that position detection switch. Uh, and just use contact cleaner and spray down in there. And unfortunately, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's tied to the geared mechanism, so you can't really move it up and down with it in there. Uh, so I had to put a tape in and run that route to, and hope. And there was no problem. So this may not have really sat long enough, but I don't want to make you wait. So. Let's see how the clean job did. So ADAT machine is on. We're going to throw our tape in. Loaded. Doing what it does. Immediately got time. What error 7, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
Um, this might mean that there's a lot of errors on it. I don't know. But that looks cool. So there it is. Uh, rough clean on an ADAT machine. Once again, paper debate. Chamois versus paper. I I've, I've, haven't tried the chamois yet. Maybe in the future. Um, I should look that up. Uh, I'm not sure if that dot, dot means that there's a, a still a, a pretty rough error rate or not. Um, there is another way on some machines to, to report that, but uh, and it's recording. Yeah, I didn't make it, but peak levels what? So good luck to you. Uh, with any luck, you'll be able to get your machine up and running and get your material off of it, or maybe record new material on one. Who knows? Uh, if you like it, drop a. Or if you're if you're successful, drop a message in the comments. Uh, and good luck.